In this video, I want to talk about cranes. Cranes are quite simple objects and they're very simple to use. So we will check them both and both of them are the jeep crane and the overhead crane. So to start with something done, we have this model that shows up, shows some boxes in the beginning and convey them until this point. And there's a probability for these boxes to continue on the convey or to just disappear. And the box is generated here and we have this variable which is remove random true 0.5. So there's a 50% chance that the box needs to be removed. I adjusted the box to the size of the material item type. So let's go with it. So now we have a scale that makes things look pretty big and when you generate the jeep crane which is the first one we're going to look at it's pretty big like cranes are generally pretty big but we can easily change this in the position and size segment we'll generate a crane which is two meters high with a jeep that is two meters long you can define the position here or move it or drag and drop it you can define an initial jeep angle which is the angle of this, of the jeep, basically. You can define the initial trolley position, but since the crane, the jeep length is two meters, then we should change this to, for example, one. Now we have the trolley position in the middle, in the beginning of the simulation. You can also define a block zone, meaning that the crane is not able to move in this area. So it's not a full rotation, but just part of a rotation. And here you can define the zone start angle for if it's 135, you have this. But for example, if I use zero, you have the start in angle zero, and then it will move 90 degrees. So the forbidden zone will be here. Let's keep the default to 135 and we can work with this. So this whole circle is the zone in which the jeep can actually work. So let's put it so let's put it here. So what we want to do is if the box needs to be removed, the jeep will grab it and put it in this node. Of course the crane can only reach things that are within this circle, so be careful with that. We have already a camera set up here and we will see everything in three dimensions because with cranes, three dimensions are much better. You can change the appearance of the of the crib. There are three different options, and you can play with them yourself. They make no difference in terms of simulation results. Finally, you can define the speed of the trolley, the lifting speed, and the rotation speed. Let's increase them a little bit because they are quite slow. Also, you can define the component movement mode. So step by step, that means that the trolley, the lifting, and the rotation will move one after the other in order. If you use concurrent, they will move all of them at the same time, which means that this is much faster. Let's tell this that the material item type is a box. And with this in place, we need to tell any logic what to do with the crane. And for that, we can use the move by crane element or block. And with this, we will tell any logic what to do with the crane. First, you choose the crane, of course, which is this one. And then you choose a destination. A destination can be the typical destinations that you have. You can put it on another conveyor, another position conveyor. Uh, we can, you can put it into a node, into another agent, and into a particular position. For now, we will use a node, and we will use this node. So the crane will pick up a box that is defective, maybe, here, and put it there. There's also a loading time. This is the time it takes for the crane to grab the object once the object is reached and the unloading time the same to remove the object from the crane. Also, instead of the speeds that you define in the crane, you can also use the operation time. You can set a certain amount of time here in order for the crane to use that exact amount of time or a distribution of time to grab the object and put it in to the destination. Also, the selection pattern for the agents, if there are many that are in the queue, 
to be grabbed by the crane. You can select uh, first in, first out, or customize based on priority. For example, you can make agent dot priority, um, and that will grab things based on the priority. For now, we will use FIFO only. Very simple. Also, you have a minimum height that you can use in order to grab an object. You can play with this on your own if you want. Finally, you have the typical resource stuff where the hook can stay where it is after it's done or it can return to initial position and the initial position, remember, is defined in the crane around here. Okay, now we are ready to go. Let's run the simulation. Now the boxes will start appearing here and with a 50% chance they will be defective and the crane will grab it. But it seems to be too fast. And why is it too fast? Because I define the operation time to be zero. So it's kind of instantaneous. So let's change this again and run again the simulation. Now here we are, the, grab, the object is grabbed, but you have to move to the object. But you can see that the box is kind of floating and it's not actually on the top of the crane. Right, so why is that happening? Because in the box, remember, these dimensions are the real dimensions of the object, not the box. And we already def we are defining here that the height of the box is one meter, and that is not true. It's actually around 0 0.5. I already adjusted the length and the width, but the height I didn't adjust. So I'm doing it now. Now I'm running again. The crane moves and grabs the box exactly where I want to grab it. Now, of course, they disappear once they arrive here because there's a sink. But this works much better. So the only lesson to learn here is that we need to choose the dimensions correctly in order for everything to look perfectly fine. Now, let's play with the second crane. Let's move this around here. And let's play with the overhead crane. The overhead crane is also very big when as a default value but you can change the size, of course. You have to keep this in the middle because this is the hook. So you have to move it around. You can, of course, use all the position and size elements here and define everything there. So we will put the overhead crane over the, the conveyor and we will have a hook there that will grab the boxes and put them now here. Of course, you can put them in the previous position of the node because this moves differently. So again, here the material type will be the box. And the same here, you have movement mode, step by step, concurrent or independent hoist. So basically, step by step, all of them move separately, concurrent, they all move at the same time. And independent hoist is the bridge and the trolley move at the same time and they move separately from the hoist. So you can try different options here in order to, to see what fits more with your model, with your reality. But for now, we are going to use concurrent because it's the fastest. You can define speeds again. Let's increase them a little bit because in general, it's very slow. And for this example, it would be okay to make it a little bit faster. Now, on the move by crane, we will need to change first that we want to use this crane and the rest is the same. In fact, you have exactly the same parameters whether you use an overhead crane or a jeep crane. It doesn't really matter. So let's run the simulation. Of course, the crane is pretty high right now. So let's change that. Let's make this the high only 2 meters instead of 10 and the rest should be fine. Let's run it again. Okay, now everything looks a little bit better. You can move this a little bit to see the destination. And we'll see how the boxes are picked up and move towards the destination. So that's it. Of course, this crane can also fail and be repaired. But this is all done manually as well, the same way you do with stations or other, other elements, elements related to the conveyors. So let's add two buttons here. And on the fail button, we'll use overcrane.fail. And on the repair button, we'll use overcrane.repair. 
and we can run the model and see what happens when it fails and when it's repaired. Okay, now we have the thing moving stuff and we can make it fail when it's grabbing a box and when it fails, the box stays there. Now we can repair it and it continues working. 